Welcome, welcome, and welcome to Marriage 101. My name is Atia, and I am the founder of The Marriage Tree, where we help men, women, and couples discover their own truth for a better marriage and relationship. In this message, I want to talk to you about the basics of marriage. And what I want to do is offer you 10 basic marriage tips to help get you through some of those common challenges that often arise in marriages. Now, anyone who is married or has been married can tell you that marriage is not always peachy. It's not an easy road to tread. It does take work. It takes a stick-to-it attitude and a decision to work together no matter how hard the other person may be to deal with. And sometimes both husbands and wives can be very difficult to deal with. But when couples do actually work together, not just in word, but also in deed, and when they view their roles as members of a team instead of opposing forces, therein you have half the battle. Now, there are many ideals and philosophies out there of how marriage should go. And the truth is some may be very effective for your relationship, while others may not help at all. But the important thing is to find a method that works for your relationship and that works for you and your mates' individual personalities. Now, this doesn't mean to sweep things under the rug, to tolerate abuse of any kind, be complacent, or not deal with the real issues. What I'm saying to you is to determine and agree upon the best method or practice for your particular relationship and then be consistent with the execution of what you decide. However, again, the key is working together. Now, there are many psychologists, marriage counselors, and relationship coaches out there who have great advice. And couples who utilize their services can actually be the better for it if they, in fact, take the prescription. However, honestly, how many actually do? And if they do, how many actually continue using the principles over an extended period of time? You know, if you are looking for ways to make your relationship better, no matter how many great people are out there to support you and help you succeed, it boils right down to you and your mate. And that's the bottom line. And I often hear um, many couples who have difficulty in their marriage, they've anticipated maybe marriage being something different than what they might be experiencing at the moment. And what I want to say to you, if you are one of those couples, this is not unusual. Many couples go through this. And I can understand that sometimes this may lead to you becoming disappointed in your relationship or feeling that maybe the grass is greener on the other side. You know, the truth is sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. And I do want to say to you, um, particularly those who might be looking at their own relationship and comparing it to someone else's, you know, grass that is greener is grass that is being watered. I want to say that again. Grass that is greener is grass that is being watered. So before you start watering your neighbor's grass, try giving your own grass what it needs, and you'll find that you have just as beautiful of a lawn as the one you are eyeing. You cannot neglect, abuse, or misuse what you have and expect it to form, perform at its best. A car needs to be tuned up. A house needs maintenance and repairs. A plant needs sunlight and watering. Likewise, a marriage needs adequate attention for it to thrive. So don't expect to build a happy home, yet refuse to get your hands dirty and get in there and work at it. It just doesn't happen that way. You see, a car doesn't drive itself. You know that it takes a driver, and that driver must take action in order to move the car. If the driver is reckless, the car can veer out of control. If a house is not properly built or the foundation is not stable, then the house will not be able to withstand the various weather conditions and the cha changing seasons. So at the end of the day, it's not your therapist's responsibility to keep your marriage together. It's not your pastor's. It's not your friend's or your parent's job to make your marriage work. It's your responsibility and the responsibility of your mate. Now, I know that it can be very frustrating when negotiating with your spouse to respond to your needs 
and then actually respond the way you want and need them to respond. I know that can be frustrating, but again, at the end of the day, the responsibility belongs to the two of you. And believe you me, running is not always the answer. And so what I would like to do at this time is offer you 10 basic marriage tips that will help you get through some of those common problems that might have already crept up in your marriage or some that often creep up at some point in time in just about every relationship. But the first thing I want, the first tip is make your spouse your number one priority after the creator. I want to say that again because sometimes we let all sorts of things get in the way of our relationship and then we don't take the necessary time out with our mate and really make our mate the priority that they should be. So the first tip is to make your spouse your number one priority after the creator. The leave and cleave principle is worth its weight in gold to a healthy and happy marriage, if you but understand, and I can't stress that enough. The truth of the matter is if the couples do not cleave, someone is bound to leave. The second tip is communicate with your spouse and consult with them. Remove the I and replace it with the we. Nothing destroys loving communication faster than feeling like you don't matter or not a part of the plan. When you got married, you chose to exchange the singleness for the togetherness. And don't be surprised if you try to do the single thing in a together situation and it doesn't work out well because two opposing ideas cannot occupy the same space at the same time and there be harmony. So be sure to communicate with your spouse and consult with them. The third tip is fight fair. I cannot stress this enough, fight fair. That means no stonewalling, no name calling, playing the dozens, verbal abuse, going to bed, not speaking to one another, or withholding intimacy out of frustration or anger. You know, these are games people play because they lack self-control, but they are the very games that chip away at the core of any marriage. This is a game that both players lose. The fourth tip is practice self-control and maturity. Now, people get upset and angry. That's natural. And any couples that say, oh, we never fight or we never argue, you know, that's a bunch of baloney because it's natural in relationships to get upset, to get angry, particularly when you're trying to become one in your relationship or you have two very different people who are now synergizing their lives and their very being. So people do get upset and angry, yet how you handle anger is key. Don't lock yourself in a room and your spouse out of one. The only thing that should be between you and your spouse is loving kindness. And it is, it's emotionally abusive to lock your spouse out of a room absent a physical danger. And nothing breeds distrust faster than locked doors between couples with the refusals of opening them. In truth, you are locking more than doors in regards to your marriage. And you might find that when you are ready to open them, the door might be jammed. And the truth is, this is very immature behavior and it, it stresses that you have difficulty with self-control. So I would encourage you as a fourth tip to practice self-control and maturity. The fifth tip is be patient with one another. I know this one is hard sometimes, but as couples, you have to really work hard to be patient with one another. You know, it's amazing how patient and forbearing couples are with one another when they are trying to get the other. You know what I'm talking about. But somehow that forbearance goes out the window when the I do's happen. But you know, patience is a demonstration of maturity as well and the willingness to do what is necessary to work things out. So really work hard to be patient with one another. The sixth tip is make time for intimacy. There is no such thing as I don't have time when it comes to a healthy marriage. People do what's important to them. That is the bottom line, and that's real talk. Couples who make their marriage an important part of their life make the time to nurture it and give it what it needs to thrive. 
And these same couples are usually happier and they get the most out of their marriage. So if you can make time to go to the barbers or the salon, the dentist or the doctor's appointments, if you can surf the web, if you can tweet your daily tweets or make your Facebook posts, come on now, you know what I'm talking about, or the other things you deem that's so important and so necessary, then how important is your spouse? and making the time to nurture that relationship. So definitely your spouse is something of quality. So give your spouse the quality time that they deserve. And those other casual situations or relationships, they don't get your time like that. The seventh tip I would like to offer is balance me time with me time. Now, it is important for couples to have individual time and space for their own personal development. That's important. Yet when the me time far outweighs the we time, then something is wrong with that picture and you have to examine it. Now, if you find you much rather do things alone or without your spouse, then perhaps you need to reconsider some things because marriage is about togetherness, not singleness. And if you prefer the me over the we more, then you might want to ask yourself if you are truly in the right life situation. The eighth tip, share household responsibilities. Oh, I cannot stress this enough because a lot of couples often stay into it over this. And as a marriage strategist and life coach, when I've gone through these sessions with some of these couples, it's amazing how this small problem, which, which can be a big problem, um, happens, but so easy to resolve. Share household responsibility. You know, couples, nothing puts a damper on morale in marriage faster than the feelings that your spouse is not pulling their fair share around the whole house or is not being a team player. You know, household maintenance and upkeep is not a gender responsibility. It's a team effort. And one of the worst feelings is to be taken for granted. And nothing drives that point home faster than a spouse who doesn't help. So please share household responsibilities. The ninth tip is pray together. Yes, pray together. That old familiar tune of family that prays together stays together. I have a feeling that is actually very true. And it takes humility to pl pray with your mate, especially when they are getting on your last nerves or you just don't want to be around them at the moment. In truth, that is when you actually should be more apt to pray together. That's when it's important to pray together more is when you just can't stand the sight of your mate. Now, when both husband and wife realize or believe that there is a power greater than them both, they tend to honor and respect one another more. However, I want to say that mere belief counts for nothing unless carried into practice. And the 10th tip, be loyal and faithful friends. You know, some couples act as if they are mortal enemies. And this is a ridiculous disposition to have. Here, they, they fight each other, they compete, they try to get one up on the other. But you have to remember friendship. If you want a war and desire to be on the battlefield, go to war with anything or anyone who causes a division or sow seeds of dissension in your marriage and get on the battlefield to make your marriage work. You know, there's enough unrest in the world. Who wants to come home to it? And if you're one of those ones who intentionally pick fights or stir the pot with your mate just to get them going or hear their mouth, you might take a closer look at what you might be cooking up. Know when fun has turned file. So those are the 10 tips. I'll go over them very, very briefly so that if you're taking notes, which this is definitely a message you want to take notes on. The first tip is make your spouse your number one priority after the creator. The second tip is communicate with your spouse and consult with them. The third one is fight fair. The fourth one is I know you notice I put stress on that third one about fighting fair because this one, it really manifests in sessions, trust me. But the third one, again, is fight fair. The fourth one is practice self-control and maturity. The fifth one is be patient with one another. 
The sixth one is make time for intimacy. And the seventh is balance me time with we time. And eight is share household responsibility. Number nine, pray together. And number 10, be loyal and faithful friends. It has been a pleasure sharing this information with you. And again, thank you for listening to Marriage 101. And I look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great day.